What's going on, everybody? You are now tuned in to the first episode of Perspectives Corner. And I have my first guest here, Lamar Allen, and I'm your host, Aaron Chase. Today, we'll be tackling the topic of closure. We're trying to figure out, is closure a crutch or is it necessary? So, what is your initial ideal of closure? My idea of closure is honestly finding out what happened, what, what took place, what went wrong, who was at fault, why did it end? And that's my idea of getting closure. So is that something that is necessary for you in life? It depends. If I didn't care about the situation or if my mindset was this was really over before it ended, I'm like, yeah, it ended. I'm done. I'm good. But if you're someone that I cared about or the situation is one that I cared about, I typically want to know why did it, what happened? If I don't know and we just parted ways or I just stepped away from the situation and not really knowing why, I, that's important for me to find out as, as a person and as a Scorpio. I need to know. <laughs> so for me, I don't really care about closure. Um, one of the biggest things for me is understanding who I am in someone else's life and understanding who they are in my life. So I used to be a person that cared a little bit about, you know, what people thought of me and, and how they thought of, you know, situations and circumstances. And, and I found that I was exuding entirely too much energy on trying to figure out reasons why, when a lot of times people know you well enough to know what gets under your skin. True. And people know you well enough to know what makes you happy or not a lot of times that, that have been, you know, a significant part of your life. Right. And when I learned that or understood that a little bit more, I understood a little more about myself. Okay. So then I was like, oh, I shouldn't be going crazy trying to figure out why they're not answering the phone. The fact of the matter, they're not answering the phone. So whatever's wrong doesn't really matter because they're not answering the phone. So why am I wrecking my brain trying to figure out the reasons why and what's going on if they're not trying to reciprocate that energy? That's understandable. Now, do you feel like, do you feel like reaching out to them? Like we, for example, you said they're not answering the phone. So obviously you're making the attempt to reach out. Do you feel like that's some form of getting closure? Like I'm reaching out to you to talk to figure out, I've called you at least twice. You know, we, we hang out all the time and we talk, you know, periodically here and I there. I really don't know him. Go ahead. At all. <laughs> um, but, you know, you call and, and, you know, from time to time, you send messages from time to time, and then all of a sudden everything just stops to where you're not answering the phone, you're not, you know, talking to me, you're not doing anything. Eventually, I'm going to notice a pattern. Once I notice the pattern, for you to make a drastic you know change like that i'll just send a message saying hey hope everything is okay if there's no response after that i don't care what the reasons why or anything of that i just allow you to have your space your moment for you because right. apparently i'm not a part of you know this chapter or this stage or phase or whatever you have going on so i try to make sure that i i, I show concern mm -hmm. But I don't care too much about the closing off of it or trying to understand, well, why aren't we talking anymore? If you cared enough about our relationship and you had a problem, because I apparently didn't have the problem since I'm still <laughs> trying to figure out yeah. how you are and stuff like that. But if you reach out, because at, at the end of that situation, you could say, well, I reached out to you last. I made the point to figure out was something wrong and you closed the door on me. So you made you did your part. You can't you can't force a person to do anything. Right. So if you feel like, hey, there's a problem, I reached out to you, you didn't respond, I see that you're on social media, I see that you're on the other apps. You know, yeah, I see that you're active, so you're alive. I don't see you posting anything about any cellular issues, there's no towers that, towers that have went down. So you, you did what you needed to do to reach out. If they didn't reach back out to you, then at the end of the day, you've done your part. Right. And that's kind of it. So have you known anyone that has used closure as a crutch or, or you know, said, oh, okay, now that I've gotten closure, I can move on with the rest of my life? You ain't got to say no names. 
<laughs> well, really, I was gonna say my. I was really gonna say myself, <laughs> but I have I have known for other people too, especially in situations where they were dating someone. Usually, it's usually, and this is only because women are are the more emotional of the genders. <laughs> no shade, you know. I don't agree with that, but that'll be our next topic. Boom. Um, there are a lot of times where women they really give themselves to men, and those particular men that they give themselves to. They're not as attached. It's like, well, you know, you ran your course. I'm, I'm, I got something else to do. Even though it's not, maybe not another person. It's just I got basketball. I got stuff I need to do. I gave you your five minutes of fame, and I've hyped up the situation. Now I'm over it. And the women are like, well, what did I do? Is there something I did wrong? Oftentimes you hear things like, is it my looks? Am I changing? And, and you don't have to be with someone for ten or fifteen years. It's just if you if you devote yourself to someone for any small amount of time. And you feel like, okay, something changed. What happened? They want closure. Did you just leave because you just ain't shit person? Or did I do something wrong? So oftentimes, women especially that I've seen, they want their closure. Like, it, did I do something? I personally feel as though closure is a crutch. I feel as though it is, it's one of those things that keep you from the next stages and the next you know, levels in life. So mentally, in order for me to grow, I have to be able to not have closure and move on and still be able to be happy, still be able to you know, succeed and achieve and do certain things and continue with my life without it. Because I'll, I'll give you a prime example. My father. Mm -hmm. I never really got closure with the situation with him because my sole, you know, purpose was to get him to be around. Mm -hmm. And once I came to terms with the fact that he's not going to be around, then I didn't care about the reasons why. I didn't care about, you know, uh, if he loved me or, you know, or all of the extra intricate details about the thing because the fact of the matter is, is what I wanted was for him to be around. Absolutely. And he wasn't around, so, okay, all right, cool. Now I'm, I'm over and I'm done and I'm not worried about it anymore. And I know a lot of people say, oh, well, because my father wasn't in my life, you know, um, I'm not able to... To, to become a man. <laughs> I'm not able to really know what men do and, and how to, you know, carry myself or treat women right because I don't have a father in my life and things like that. But I've learned that when there's a void somewhere else, and I'm not sure if uh, any of the viewers are spiritual, but, you know, when there's a void in my life from one aspect, there's always something else that fills that void. Absolutely. And the issue that I have with you know, warning closure is that you'll miss this whole picture over here trying to figure out what's over here. Why this over here is not what it should be when you have everything that you need right here and this huge picture. And that's why I feel like closure is a crutch. I feel like the reasons why should never supersede the fact of the matter. The fact of the matter is, is that y'all not talking no more. The fact of the matter is, they didn't reach out to tell you what their, their problem was. The fact of the matter is, is that life goes on, you know? So when it comes to closure, for me, it's like, okay, yeah, it, it'll be nice to know, you know, what's going on or whatever. But it's not something that I wreck my brain over anymore because... I think every situation is different. Now, the example that you gave, absolutely. It's like I'm not going to waste all of my life trying to figure out what happened with you, one person, who's obviously not trying to be in my life. So I say situations are different because if you have the same recurring act and something happens with somebody or a certain situation, you say, well, I don't care. It ended, whatever. Then you move on. Then it happens again. It's like, ah, I don't really care. When you made the mention of moving forward, if it's the same type of situation that's happening, you may need that closure to know what to do to fix it to move on. So if, every situation is different. I love the example that you gave. I'm the same situation with my father, except for I didn't put as much effort into it as you did. <laughs> it is what it is. You missed out on this great man sitting before you right now. So situa yeah. situations are different. <laughs> you mad. I definitely agree with what you're saying. You don't, you don't as they say, you don't uh, beat a dead horse. Like, yeah, So, I, but I, I've seen people, you know, and and... This goes more on the drastic spectrum. Um, I myself have never been raped. I've almost been raped before. But Jesus. I know there are people that, you know, battle with that in life and want to understand exactly what was wrong with them. And, you know, kind of like you said, what, what did I do wrong? Why did I deserve this and all of these things? And they will 
waiting for the closure in order for them to move on with life or to be happy with another person or to be able to, you know, do things with other people and not to be insensitive to that. But when you understand the fact of the matter that one, it happened. One. Two, if ever you want to, you know, get to another stage or another level with someone else or allow yourself to open up to someone else, you're going to have to get past what happened and try to move into more of who am I? What am I? You know, like, what am I trying to accomplish? What am I trying to do with my life and focus on your goals and your aspirations and get aside from what happened. Are you saying that that's just what they need to do? As is that simple or just in well, general, well, in no, general, that never, needs to be done? It's never simple when, uh, see, and the thing is, is that for me, everybody in my life, I love. It's not something that is easy to say, oh, well, you know, I, I don't care no more or whatever. Yeah, you're going to feel away sometimes. Sometimes you're going to feel a little lonely because you miss, you know, the laughs and the jokes and the, yeah. you know, and the small back comments and things like that, you know. But then you also come to a point eventually, you know, that it's like, oh, I can't change him. I can't change her. I can't change the situation. Yes. I can't change anything. Yes. And the sooner that you can figure out that, then you can just move past things like this. What I've learned is understand the fact of the matter and then move on. Don't worry about all of the reasons why. Because once you get caught up in the reasons why, you're stuck mentally and emotionally. And that drains you after yeah. a bit. And a lot of times when people get closure or they get to the point where they're over trying to have closure, they're, they're drained so much and, you know, they, they've gotten sick several times over or things like that mm -hmm. to where, you know, you've already affected yourself the worst way possible, waiting on reasons why and what's really going on and all of this, that, and the other when you could have just like, you know what, hey, fact of the matter is, I don't know what's going on. If they want to come to me and talk to me about it, eventually they will. If I'm at a different space in my life, then hey, I, I may not be available. So do you feel that, so are, do you feel that you should not put forth any effort or you just should not let it weigh you down? I feel as though there is a level of effort for everyone okay. to give, okay. which is if I'm doing the normal, you know, things like, like, like I said, just hitting you up, just saying, hey, what's up, or things like that, and I'm not getting responses back, you know, and then I say, hey, hope everything is okay, you know, and stuff like that, and no response. You've From done there, your part. That's it. You've done you know? your part. And that's with anybody in my life. I don't care Absolutely. how how much I love you, how much I care about you. If you decide not to involve me, you know, in a specific aspect or, or, or a time in your life, mm -hmm. I can't force my way in, but I've had people you know, that have forced the, their ways in and, oh, you're going to talk to me just so that they can understand this, that, and the other. Sometimes I just need space. Sometimes I just need to sit to myself. And have you relayed that to them? I have stated that before, mm -hmm. and it still goes more into the reasons why. But why me? Why you can't talk to me about it? Why you can't do... And then you open that door and the it's like, The fact of the matter is, I need some space, I need some time to myself. Mm -hmm. Reasons why don't matter. You have to respect your space mm -hmm. just like you have to respect my space. Absolutely. And that, that kind of just gets me more into the, the fact of the matter versus the emotional matter mm -hmm. at hand. Yeah, you may be going through a lot. You may have, you know, different things. But if you're not at a place to want to express or divulge the information, then who am I to, to force you? Okay, wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so you mentioned... <laughs> Y'all saw it was brewing. <laughs> so you mentioned that if you reach out to someone on several occasions... Like, hey, how you doing? You okay? Are you alive? And they still don't reach out and you, okay, well, I've done my part. But then on the flip side, you said that you've had people to push the issue and push the envelope with you. You're going to talk to me and you're like, I just need my time. And I said, well, have you relayed that to them? And then you said, if I did, 
or, or the times that I have, they wanted to know the whys. So that's the contradiction. Those same people that you reached, uh, you reached out to and they just did not give you any conversation back and you just, didn't, you just was like, well, it is what it is. They could have been that I need my space. So do, at that point, do you feel that, okay, I've done my part. I haven't cut you off, but I'm, I'm here whenever you're done. Or do right. you feel like I reached out to you, so it's over? See, and that's kind of like, I have maybe about two or three situations going on right now uh, in my life with people that am i one of those <laughs> you're here oh. <laughs> small back and off but there are definitely times where or the the situations that i'm that i'm dealing with right now these are situations that you're not in a space to talk or to express what's going on I'm not in a space to constantly try to reach out or try to figure out or fix Stalk or, you. You know, or try to do anything. My thing is, I've always been a person that, if I haven't talked to you in a minute, I'll be like, hey, what's up? I'm not going to 21 questions you right. trying to figure out what the issue is. And if you come back around, I'm still not going to be like, oh, okay, now, now, now what happened? You know, now I am the type of person that, oh, you know, after we've been around each other uh, consistently, you know, like we were before, then I'll be like, oh, okay, because you know you like to go ghost and stuff. And then exactly. I just say stuff like that and mm -hmm. then, you know, continue on. Because some people don't know how to express themselves mm -hmm. to people that they care about. Because they don't know exactly how that's going to come across. Mm -hmm. Me, I've always been a person that's just really direct and blunt. And it doesn't matter about how it makes you feel because it's an honest truth. You're a horrible person. I don't take into consideration your emotional state if I'm doing you a disservice by not expressing something to you and harboring feelings mm. towards you or towards a situation. I'm more of a direct person that's just going to say, I don't like how you said that. I don't like how you treat me. This is a problem because I'm also the type of person that wants to give someone an opportunity to decide what they want to do in the situation. Because I'm not a person that's going to force you or try to make you do anything that I would like for you to do. However, I am a person that will say, this is what it is. According to what you decide, this is what I'm going to do. Hmm. So you basically lay it out. Yeah. And then say the so, choice is yours. So, hey, if you cannot respect the boundaries of, you know, the people that I'm friends with, then I'm not going to bring you around said friends. And you decide what you want to do. And then next time you go around that person or these people or, you know, and stuff like that, and you do certain things that we've already discussed or that I've discussed with you, then I just act on that. I'm not going to invite you around anymore. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But I think that that's, that's more simple and simplified than... Just so what's generally just what's the away. feedback? Because obviously you've expressed to them how you feel about let's say in that said person in, the, in those said situations mm -hmm. what what was the, the feedback like what 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 did they come back with did they well, say okay i'm i'm gonna i understand i'm gonna fix that did they skip past it because generally if a person does not fully address it then and you all just kind of split and then come back it's going to happen again because mm -hmm. obviously they didn't hear right, you exactly. so what was the response so the response or the responses that i typically get are more of like a shutdown type you know okay. just just like a like an All offended my or something. Are hurt, okay. I'm just like, oh, I'm just so distraught. Okay, well, take your time. <laughs> but it still stands. Uh, okay. What I'm gonna do if you know you decide to do whatever you decide to do, and it, it's for me that takes the closure aspect completely out of it. I don't have to have closure because I'm a direct person, and I think that because of my truth to people, you know. I don't really care if you have a uh, harbored emotion when I've been direct with you and you can be direct with me. Until you can find that strength to express what's wrong, it just is what it is. Because I'm always open to hear what's going on or what, what caused you to, to be this way or that way. Mm -hmm. However, I'm not a person that needs to hear what you have to say in order for me to continue on in a positive light because that's a negative space that you place yourself in waiting on reasons why something didn't work out it's something 
There's something in the middle. My God, can I get a witness? <laughs> and it's something that it, it's, uh, it's like you're tap. I don't want to say it's like you're tap dancing around it, but it, I'm trying to, that's why my eyes keep wondering. I'm not completely crazy. But. are back with the Lamar Allen and he was just getting to the gist of what you know he wanted to say about so just sitting here having this conversation with you there are two takeaways that I have one you you're very direct and a lot of people cannot take that directness I appreciate it because of our relationship you and I are both direct so if you're direct with me worst case scenario I may say something slick or petty back but I'm receiving what you're telling me I'm not taking offense to it right. everybody is not able to take that mm -hmm. so you would have to, in my opinion you would have to at least take into consideration mm -hmm. that people are not going to be as receptive to what you would prefer right. first takeaway second takeaway is you basically have from you know just my opinion this is my perspective you are a, it is what it is. Like, I've got it out of the way, or we've done this, this is what it is. So now that you know, you should be good. And again, everybody does not take that that way. People take it as, certain people take it as, okay, I see this is the situation, I'm kind of uncomfortable, I know what it is, but I don't really know how to handle it. You, it's like, it is what it is. This is what it is, you know, I know, let's get past it. So I, you, are, you have a very dominant attitude and personality and even though it will be great for everyone to match and be equally yoked oftentimes they're not yeah. and hence needing certain people needing closure and you having to understand that I may not need it mm -hmm. but other people may I think that takes me back to like my initial statement mm -hmm. of you know understanding the people around you Absolutely. because there are people that you know I could speak a certain way and they don't understand what I'm trying to convey. And there are people that I could, like you, I could just say whatever and then you would be like, for clarity purposes, this, this, mm -hmm. this, is this, this. And, and we'll sure. have the effective communication, you know, with one another just mm -hmm. so that we understand each other. Some people just take away something that they just, you know, run with it and, and, and do whatever. Interpret That's how they typically will. typically yeah. where my I don't care attitude comes in. Because you've gotten like, it out the way. Yeah. What you do I'm with it is that. on you. Right. And see, and, and so, like, a lot of times when I know who I'm dealing with, if they mm -hmm. are, like, an uh, overly emotional type person, I'll try to put it into, you know, terms that they would understand. Mm -hmm. It's still direct. Yeah. But I'm not going to, because I'm not going to go and just be like, okay, look, let me hold your hand and make you feel comfortable about this conversation. I'm just going to kind of be like, okay, well, you know. Let me kind of tailor it to you a do little. Do you remember when this happened? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So remember how you felt? That's how I feel. I don't like it. You see what I'm saying? So because I know someone or because I get to know people in certain ways, and not everybody gets to know people the way that I get to know people or the way that you get to know people, but I pay attention to a person as a whole. Understand. And the holistic version. So I don't just pay attention to who you think you are. I pay attention to who you actually are too. Absolutely. Because who I think I am could be more or less than who I actually am. Because we, we go, you know, through life wanting to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can battle with actually being yeah. that way. So for me, <laughs> I have to allow people to go through their process of growth just like I had to. You know, without closure, without, you know, the extra additives and things like that, at least dealing with me so that they understand exactly how it's going to go. Because I don't want to get into a cycle or not even a cycle. I don't want to get to a point where I've done something to, to be um, a crutch or to, to give you what you needed for that moment. And you expect that every time. And... That's that's one of the things that I learned from my past about, you know, sugarcoating things or trying to convey something to you in the way that you want to want 
it to be conveyed uh -huh. versus the, what was necessary to convey. That sounds like temporary enabling. And I say that because, and now correct me if I'm wrong, and I want you to somewhat elaborate on that. When you say that how I may address the situation now, I may not do that later or I may not keep doing it. If you tailor something to someone and you give them the more specific version and then you just later on give them the generalized version, they're going to say, okay, I understood you before. Mm -hmm. If you feel like they're the type of person that needed that then, mm -hmm. are you expecting them to, to, to grow past it? Or? That's the reason that I, I take a more direct approach versus the, the softer way, beat around the bush, you know, try to try to convey or allude to something instead of just directly saying it. So unless you're saying, which I know you're not, unless you're saying that everybody that I want in my circle, everybody that's in my circle, I want them to be direct, mm -hmm. you are going to have to tailor some to certain people. So where is your mindset in reference to everybody I meet is not going to be direct? What am I going to right. do? Well, the, the things that I actually do for people like that mm -hmm. is I ignore the situation completely. <laughs> if it's not, like, say if, again, if... There's a person that has an issue mm -hmm. and they're not speaking about it. They're acting away. Mm -hmm. And typically this is my, my message to people mm -hmm. if I see a difference in mannerisms and things of that nature. I will say, I hope everything is okay. That gives you a window to speak or say no things aren't okay, or just to speak, that opens the dialogue. If you don't do it, I don't pry and, and pry and pry. I'm just, I'm just not that person. So it's okay if I am distanced from, a, like distanced from a person because of that. I'm in total agreement with you doing your part. Mm -hmm. And if you're opening that door or opening, giving them that window to let you know something is wrong and they don't, You've done your part. Right. I, I, I am an advocate of doing what I need to do. I can't make you do. Right. I, I cannot make you give me that, any more than what you've that. given me. So I do like the, if, as direct as you are, I do like the fact that you're constantly stating, you're adamant about, I'm going to at least reach out. So I know that I've done right. my part. If you don't want to open I, up, that's on you. But that's also a form of closure. So, when we talk about closure, we talk about, you know, his way of understanding a person and making sure that, you know, things are contoured towards that, that individual. And my way, which is just being very direct and then allowing things to be exactly what they are. Tell me exactly what you all think in the comments below. So in closing, we definitely want everyone to understand that yes, it's always great to have an opening for closure, but don't allow your need for closure to stagnate your progression. Absolutely. Again, my name is Aaron Chase, and this is the Lamar Allen. <laughs> it's been great. And again, it's all love. I need your help. Take care. my mind it seems a ran out of time and I don't know where to go from here I made a mess of my own life trying my best but nothing comes out right